So good morning, everybody. Uh, let me share the slides. Um, welcome to the session. We're very glad to uh, um, have um, to have you all here uh, for this innovation for adaptation session with the title "Innovative Community Engagement with Climate Information Services, Early Warning Systems for Flood Resilience," led by Plan International, Practical Action, and Global Parametrics. My name is Kian Brosino, and I'm the Climate, Environment and Resilience Advisor at Plan International UK. Let me just start with um, some general housekeeping rules. Please note that the session has been recorded by IIED, and um, that means that part of it may be made available on the website at a later date. We have taken security precautions to discourage uninvited participants from joining the meeting uh, and posting appropriate comments. If you notice anything like that, please notify us with the, the chat function and we will remove those participants from the meeting. Also, please do not share the link to join this meeting on social media. That's one of the main ways um, and sources of Zoom bombing activity. Uh, we also suggest uh, that you close any non-essential applications on your device, such as um, Skype and Teams, uh, to really focus on this session for the next couple of hours. How to use a Zoom meeting? Uh, we're pretty sure that everybody knows how to use Zoom these days, but please see here some basic directions on how to use the commands. Please note that during the plenary, your um, mic will be muted, but you can unmute the microphone when um, you will be joining the breakout session later in the meeting. Also, feel free to use the chat function to post any question or comments. So let's start with the session and the topic of today. So um, we all know. Um, too well, that in time of emergency, timely, collaborative and effective action can help communities and responders be better prepared in order to reduce human suffering, losses and damages. Thanks to the increasing availability of risk analysis, forecasts, um, anticipatory action has in recent years been gaining momentum to provide a faster and more dignified response without having to wait for the hazards to hit the communities. Early and user-friendly information targeted to some of the most vulnerable groups can also support early action for more resilient livelihoods to shocks and stresses. The session will investigate innovative approaches using early warning system, digital forecasting technologies, an index-based flood hazards induced disaster risk analysis, as well as the role of the communities, implementing agencies, local authorities, and all partners to read most vulnerable households and groups, and enable them to act to a, prior to a potentially disastrous weather event. We are going to uh, hear from um, two examples um, through Ignite presentations. Uh, one example uh, from Indonesia and another one from Asia, still from Bangladesh. Uh, this will take the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Following the Ignite presentation, we will split the attendees in breakout groups uh, for 30 minutes conversation and we'll ask you all to bring uh, your knowledge, expertise uh, from various contexts to trigger conversation and share ideas. We will have a couple of questions to guide um, the conversation. Please, as I said, feel free to use the chat box um, to share example, ideas, uh, question. Um, those will all be captured. Each group will then be asked to report back into plenary for a couple of minutes each on the three main points. 
at the end of the uh, uh, breakout discussions. After that, we will summarize the main takeaways and close the session. So let's enjoy the session. Let's start. Our first presenter is Wendy Smith from Global Parametrics. Wendy, I'll leave it to you to start with the first presentation. Thanks. Thanks very much, Kiara. And hi, everyone. Welcome to the session. It's great to have you. My name is Wendy Smith, and I'm the Program Manager for Global Parametrics, or GP. Uh, we are the technical partner for the forecast-based flood pilot in Semarang, Indonesia, which was developed in partnership with Plan International Indonesia and Plan UK. And funding for this program was received by FCDO. The program is an adaptation of the Be Ready Anticipatory Finance concept, first piloted by Oxfam Philippines, Oxfam Novib, Plan Philippines, and other local implementing partners in Salcedo, Philippines, for tropical cyclone risk. Can okay, I get the next slide, please, Karen? So to give a bit of context, the risk of natural hazard and extreme weather events is increasing, as we all know. This is particularly prevalent with flooding events, which are the most common hazard events on the globe. Climate change is unfortunately leading to sea level rise and an increase in the deviation from usual rainfall patterns. And in fact, flooding frequency is predicted to increase by 42% across the Earth's land regions within the next 100 years. According to research, areas expected to be the most affected are low-income countries in lower latitudes. Increasing urbanization, population densities, and the buildup of infrastructure causes more communities to become vulnerable to these events, which increases the risk of loss and impact. And already low fiscal budgets for mitigation and response can lead to lower levels of formal risk protection. Paying for the rebuild and reconstruction post-event can be costly, and um, particularly in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, where budgets are already constrained, this can lead to cycles of debt and to trade-offs. So next slide, please, Kara. Innovation and in technology and risk modeling can help to combat this, but collaboration between sectors is key within this. The financial sector is ever more willing to sort of assist in covering natural hazard risk, and they are aware of a growing protection gap in formal risk transfer for those most vulnerable. Improved risk modeling technologies, such as catastrophe modeling and risk assessment, can allow for a more objective and accurate way of looking at risk. But silos of knowledge definitely exist between sectors and parties, from semantics to experience and overall expertise. A holistic and collaborative view is needed, particularly to move away from project level focus to systematic change. So to sum up in the box at the bottom of the slide, the time for interdisciplinary communication and coordination in the active assessment, management, and mitigation of natural hazard and extreme weather risk is now. Uh, next slide, please, Kara. So to conceptualize the approach of anticipatory finance, the theory of change is that receiving financial resources pre-event gives households the autonomy to protect and prepare themselves, overall reducing the impact of the event itself and increasing resilience. Receiving resources allows a household to buy food, supplies, medicine, materials to retrofit a home or funds to tide over themselves if um, during an event, if income is precarious or even to evacuate during an event. The programme combines two innovations, digital weather forecasting and risk modelling, a forecast parametric index with a built-in trigger developed by us, Global Parametrics, and financial technologies to enable pre-disaster cash payments to pre-identified vulnerable households on the ground directly via mobile money or cash cards. And as you can see on the slide there, it's the forecast flood model, which develops into a flood index calculated over a forecast time window. And then once this triggers, information is used to manage payouts on the ground. This approach was first piloted in 2019 in Salcedo by Oxfam Philippines, Oxfam Novub and other implementing partners for tropical cyclone risk. Ready program. It's a partnership between risk modeling and forecasting technologies for development of practitioners and community engagement on the ground. So the next slide, please. To show the model in practice, the diagram on this page illustrates um, that global satellite earth and observed data is ingested by us at GP to create this forecast flood index. The index has what we call a trigger, which is activated when the likelihood of impact in a predefined area passes a predefined threshold. And this threshold or this trigger considers both the severity of the event itself, 
So for this flooding event, it's flood inundation in meters in a pre-identified geography and the vulnerability of those exposed, which is why it's pivotal to develop this in partnership with practitioners and communities on the ground. Once this index is triggered, we provide information to Planned National, who then deploy funds via a payment partner to pre-identified vulnerable households and also provide on the ground support. And next slide, please. Our collaboration aims to break the silo between climate science, risk modeling and community-led resilience. We are piloting in this new context for flood risk in Indonesia in order to further validate the model and to drive forward systems level change. Key next steps of the program in Indonesia are to loop in the local government officials and to make the project sustainable. And I will now leave you with Frederica Rambu, who's the project manager for Plan Indonesia. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, Wendy. Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon from Indonesia. My name is uh, Frederica Rambu. Now I'm working for Plan Indonesia as a project manager, and I'm responsible for building resilient, adaptive, and disaster ready communities. We call Be Ready Project. The project has located in North Semarang, Central Java, in Indonesia. Uh, next slide. Next. that describe how the context of uh, North Semarang. The area is uh, a coastal area and tidal flood uh, hit in every year due to rising of sea level as impacted of global warming. And the topography is the coastal level, same with the land. There are uh, nine urban villages on this area and five of from nine uh, deal with the Tidal every year, uh, mostly happening on January to March for one until three days. Next. Yes, uh, this picture uh, shown how the situation during uh, the Tidal, uh, when the water come to village and cover the old villages and then bring some impact in their uh, community life, uh, such as uh, uh, disruption on community daily activities, what is mean uh, the daily jobs will be delayed, cannot access the main road, uh, it means uh, the mobilization will uh, limit it, uh, building the damage uh, and water degradation and bring some healthy and in environmental issue. Next. Yes, uh, following the impact uh, above, uh, Debi Ready has been uh, engaging with community and government with uh, various groups, such as men group, women group, and youth group, and leaders group to work together and to lean and improve on some subjects related to disaster preparedness, such as uh, climate disaster risk uh, assessment, uh, for base uh, index for flood, uh, linked to early warning system application uh, with the disaster agency, create a community action plan, uh, lean about digital cash and risk financing. And we conducted some study on financial mechanism or financial uh, services due to technology and strengthening partnership with local government and local mix. Uh, what we have done and we get the the learning from uh, the community as our project outcomes. Now the community understanding about their risk factors and uh, keep the efforts and working collaboration with others group to reduce the risks. And now they are able to produce a uh, plot risk map. They are also able to to access the summaries for early warning system financial management uh, through the uh, digital financial. What I mean is now the community aware that they need uh, uh, have financial forecasting based on digital to help uh, 
there during the the flood and also we are working together with uh government uh due to uh mitigation work we also integrated the community uh action plan in government and we are collaborate with others group and private sector in order in order to building the resilience next Yes, uh, we have working, we are uh, engaged with community. We have been engaging with them due to disaster already. Uh, we are following them in some information and consult with them and how to do mitigation work, collaboration with various group involved in some learning and do advocacy to government and private sector and empower them on knowledge technology and uh, digital financial now the community uh, capacity are improving they are possible to share some idea and give some input to do risk reduction work to, we need to continue our support keep inform them and engage with uh, community next wendy Uh, in inclusion here the quotes uh, mostly women group uh, mentioned they need to be prepared uh, it first and also the women leaders say they have a lot of uh, homework due to disaster risk reduction they need to have economic recovery and they need uh, to do uh, to continue their advocacy work to government and private sector and building the allowed facilities uh, in their village uh that's all we have engaged with the community the be ready project still looking some of your support in terms of continue our work on climate change adaptation in indonesia thank you so much and offer to you apsari thank you ika uh hello everyone greeting from bangladesh i'm apsari work for practical action in our bangladesh country office as a senior specialist for disaster risk reduction Today, I want to talk about why giving people knowledge, climate information, and early warning is so important, and how this simple innovation can change lives if delivered in the right way. I'm starting with the issue the innovation is trying to address. Next slide, please. Many of you know that Bangladesh is a country located in the southern part of the Asian continent, and we are on the front line of climate change. It is a land of many rivers and frequently affected by uh, flooding accompanied by storm surges and cyclones. And if I talk about the land masses, it is uh, less than five meters above the sea level. And our rural communities are heavily dependent on agricultural activities and agricultural activities, as you know, highly dependent on weather. People engage in agricultural production activities, they need weather information to manage their risk and take risk informed decision, whether it is about like selecting the crops, preparing seed bears or any other agriculture practices. And every year, flooding causes significant devastation to communities, damaging crops, houses, agricultural lands and livelihoods. Next slide, please. So what is the basically the solution to this problem from our experience and understanding we uh, our uh, our understanding is that vulnerable communities need effective early warning system and climate information they need increased knowledge and skills about potential hazards and they need localized weather forecast so they will be able to make climate informed decisions we also uh, we also need climate adaptive technologies and economic opportunities for the most vulnerable women in particular are because they are left with the additional farming and household responsibilities uh, because of the increased migration of men in search of economic opportunities. And it is now very much clear that changing climate is constraining our traditional agriculture knowledge and practices. For example, we are not getting rain when we are supposed to. The cropping calendar is changing, flowering, pollination, timing has been changing, and frequently and frequency and intensity of the heavy rainfall has increased. Our winter period has shortened and summer temperatures are increased. And definitely, these all have direct effect, effect on our agriculture and production. So early warning and information must reach people at risk of climate hazards. Next slide, please. 
the innovation uh, that I'm going to talk about today, it is a weather board, which provides a range of agricultural livelihoods information together with the information to reduce risk of disaster and health flood management in the monsoon season. It is basically a combination of different systems and builds on ownership and a national system, which is already in place. It is about the evolution of government and communities together to uh, improve the information and services. So you are now seeing the screenshot of the innovation. There are two innovations uh, which is showing in this screen. First one is the manual weather board and the second one is the digital weather board. The first innovation, manual weather board, is basically an agricultural extension tool which is combined with the community capacity building tool using local knowledge and extension knowledge with some market information. These boards contains information on rainfall, temperature, sunlight hour, evaporation rate of like last week, current week and upcoming week, and also the water level using simple symbols for easy understanding by communities where literacy may not be like high. And the interpretation and advices are in simple Bangla language so that the farmers can uh, take necessary steps for better farm management. If Next slide, please. Uh, this is the like a uh, big uh, screenshot of this uh, manual weather board. So this is an interactive uh, board where people are looking at water level. You can see in the uh, right side, the people who is pointing uh, in the board, that is basically he's looking at the water level and they are filling things in and discussing what is happening in relation to their farms. It shows a conversation between community members using the weather board changing all the time and is located in the Union Purishod. And Union Purishod are the smallest rural administrative and local government units in Bangladesh. And people are looking at it to plan their agricultural activities in this manual board, you can see easily that right side. Uh, in my left side, you can see that the weather information is being displayed, like temperature, rainfall, then sunlight hours. In the right, uh, in my right side, you can uh, see that uh, here is the water level of uh, like uh, 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 like ne next five days. That what will be the water level. And in the middle, in this white section, you can see here uh, they are actually placed the advisories that what the community needs to do under these certain certain conditions. Next slide, please. This is the second innovation, which is the digital weather board. And the advantage of this board is that they provide live information, which changes according to the data it receives about the prices of the commodities, flood early warning, weather information, and from agricultural advisories. In this weather board, you can see that it is a bit different from the manual weather board here in the middle. There is the technical video that can be uh, that can be displayed, which can uh, which which can actually uh, create more demand based services. And in my right side, there are weather informations, uh, uh, same to the like manual weather board. And in the below here, you can see these are the market prices of the agricultural commodities. And down to that, these are the important contact number in case of emergencies, so that people can actually communicate with them. I will just start. With, uh, I'll just try. To, uh, would like to give some example here. When I visited last time in the community in the month of December, Shumi Akhtar, a community member, said the flood forecast information helped me to take necessary preparation well ahead. She told me how she stored dry wood, moved her stove, stored dried food items, and planned for shelter for her livestock. She also told me like how she was able to keep her valuables from being damaged. And if I talk about myself, I'm fascinated and uh, love this innovation. A simple weather forecast and early warning interpretation and information dissemination system plays a multiple and vital role for the community to protect their assets, livelihoods, and minimize loss from natural hazards like flood and contributing in building resilience of the community. And finally, weather boards are not perfect. There are still constraints to how rural people get and use knowledge, but we have found them helpful. So I want to ask like the participants who are present in uh, today's community-based adaptation conference, how to improve the use of climate and early warning information to enable vulnerable rural populations to adapt to climate change, particularly how we can reduce negative impacts on women, children, and elderly who live and remain at risk. How can we do better? Thank you for listening to me. Over to you, Kiara. Thanks so much, Wendy and Afsari, for the insightful, pres insightful presentation. Um, Shalil now will kindly split the audience into breakout rooms, um, and we hope we can take these Ignite presentations to the next level and um, have you all share your experience, your thoughts, your ideas. 
during the breakout discussions, we'll um, discuss, um, we'll guide the discussion through the following questions that you see here. How do we improve the relevance and uptake of climate information services, an early warning system for anticipatory action to strengthen community-based adaptation? as well as how do we promote strong partnership for effective anticipatory action through CIS and EWS. Um, as mentioned, please do share your experiences and idea in the breakout rooms. There's still the chat box if you want to, uh, um, to, to continue also the conversation. We'll regroup in 30 minutes and we'll ask every group to bring back the three main points from the conversation. So, Shalil, uh, if that's okay, we'd like you to uh, to split us in breakout rooms. Thanks. The breakout rooms are open. Um, an invitation has been prompted. Please join in as soon as you can. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Um, we're just waiting to make sure everyone has rejoined this, the main room, the plenary. Um, I'd be grateful if Chiara could reshare the screen. Super. Um, the baton has been passed uh, to me. Um, so I'm Chris Henderson, uh, Head of Agriculture and Practical Action, and Practical Action is co-hosting uh, this session. Uh, uh, and um, we, we have a strong interest in trying to find ways to improve the, uh, when we know this technology, early warning systems, climate information systems, we know that they can be used for anticipatory action that really does give a positive return on that investment. We know it can make a big difference for community-based adaptation. And yet, despite the strong interest in this, by donors, by governments, by communities, by business, the uptake is still less than probably expected. So maybe the community of practice and maybe the world in general are missing a trick. We're not using these, this knowledge and these systems well enough. Um, so that's, that's our interest in this. Uh, well, you've been talking about that in your groups. We've had uh, four groups, as I understand. Uh, we're going to ask each group now to feed back on the discussion you had. And then we'll try and pick up comments from the chat. Now, please do use the chat. So uh, we've got the chat box open. Uh, I've got it on my screen. If there are questions there, as we get this feedback or reaction to what other groups have said, please do comment in the chat. Let's have a lively discussion in the chat. And if we've got some time at the end, we will also then use that for a discussion between ourselves. This is a reminder of the questions that. Um, you are asked and we're wanting the top points from each group um three minutes each i'll give you a reminder if uh, if i feel it's going on a, a bit i'll say uh, can you please um draw to a close let's hear from group one is group one ready can um shoot uh shohel can you tell us uh, who was in group one give them an opportunity to feedback Does group one have a, a, a rapporteur who is going to speak for that group and summarize? The group one rapporteur was Malia. Right. So, Malia, can you, um, is your group ready? If you're not ready, you can pass to another group, to group two. But uh, if you're ready, please take the floor. Uh, sorry, I will take some more minutes. Maybe uh, I will talk later. Pass it to another group. We don't hear you very well, I'm afraid. Sorry, you're a bit quiet. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, I will need some more minutes. Maybe can we just pass to another group? I will. Sure, absolutely. If there's group two is ready, we'll go group two. If not, ask Susan. She was in my group. Maybe Susan can kick off. I'm not sure if we are group two, uh, but I'll go maybe. So we'll... Uh, so Sarah, we'll, thank you. 
I was in the group with Ika. We had a, an interesting conversation. We actually moved quite a lot in between experiences and, and questions. So main points um, that I can report back. So we talked about um, uh, women's involvement and how to ensure that uh, women, as often they are the uh, one of the groups more impacted by flood events that can actually um, make the most and, um, of, of the information, the climate information services and all warning systems. So how can they uh, access them and be an action um, upon those information? So we talked about the language, uh, ensuring the language, the icons, the location of, of where those information are shared, um, what type, for example, of crops, if the information are um, the climate information and early warning system are also combined with um, crop um, um, advices. So the crops are actually the ones that the women uh, cultivate the most. Uh, we talked about involving women's grief. Uh, but also interestingly, how to uh, challenge social norms. So who is the primary user, for example, of ICTs and therefore can access the information the most. Um, we also uh, more generally talked about accessibility on the information in terms of ensuring that um, the particularly forecasts and climate information services are shared in a way that are uh, understandable and easy and accessible. So uh, often uh, working with uh, the information provider to find a way to translate those, th that information uh, in, in um, user-friendly. Uh, so, you know, like talking about indices that actually relates to the, the people and community's life, for example, instead of discussing probability uh, or forecast. And we also talked about feedback mechanisms, how to, um, you know, to, to assess how the various groups have um, understood the advisory, the information. So uh, have the various group, women, men, recall those, um, the, the advisory. Um, and often like involving youth, can, they can be the one bridging the gap between you know the information and maybe the the, the women as final recipients um and and finally we talked about m e so how to assess the efficacy of that information to also support sustainability of the climate information early warning system um, um efficacy that is easier to uh to to test and validate for um rapid onsets than for slow onset events. So those are the main things we discussed quite a lot, but very interesting. Maybe I'll pass it to the next group. I, I would say um, what's really, I mean, I got five, I wrote five points down there. Uh, one of them was about uh, combining uh, with crop relevant uh, agro sort of advisories. And I was thinking how that sort of links with the, the weather board tool so, I mean, lots of really interesting points to capture about probably best practice to try and improve access and um, efficiency of, of these systems. Um, that's really great. Can we hear from another group? I think our group had a very contrasting experience. Maybe I can do it deliberately in a contrasting way. Our group focused a lot more on the business case. Maybe I can pass over to Susan to talk about, uh, to highlight what we talked about, because a lot of that was around viability and business case and who partnerships. Okay, Susan. so I, I, I can't see my picture. I don't know how I'm looking. Um, so maybe I should put it off so you focus on my voice. We can hear you well. Excellent. So um, in our group, um, one, we talked about the centrality of the communities. Um, we had an experience shared that um, 
a cost benefit analysis was done and it revealed that CBA based approaches were more efficient, cost efficient than the heavy investments in these technologies. And that really speaks to the fact that we need to really put the communities at the center. They are more effective and they are financially viable. However, we spoke about sustainability and the fact that uh, early warning systems and CIS still haven't gained traction beyond where we have donor funding. And with that, we really need to strongly consider a business case that will attract private sector investments. And the investors are there, but they do not see the benefit. Um, so we, we still have a challenge there to bring that business case for the private sector, a business case for government, but also a business case for the, the, the community members, because if the private sector then decides to charge for the services, will the communities dis agree, accept to, to pay for the service? And in, in, in that, we, we, we had um, another point suggesting that beyond these technologies, early warning systems and CIS, there is need to have a service or product that resonates with the community that will bring money in on their part so that they, 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 they can relate the benefit of the, 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 these services to bringing in income and their livelihood. So maybe that resonates with what Shira, Shira says about combining EWS and crop services. We may need to think outside the box for other other services, um, just think out of the box and look at value chains in entirety. The third was that we need government. Government would catalyze social enterprises, it gives incentives, it, it, it is central, but in all these, these partnerships must begin together. It is important to have partnerships, but when you bring them towards the tail end, it doesn't work. We need to start out these partnerships at the beginning together and learn together and um, adjust together. Um, I guess that's it. Did I miss one more? I don't know. Over to you, Chris. Um, I, th I think you captured it exceptionally well. Um, that last one, someone expressed it as government catalyzing social entrepreneurship, using their money wisely to sort of unblock um, barriers. But yeah, I thought that was super. Thank you. So there was another perspective that was more around the business case and cost benefit. Would group, there's two groups left. Is one of, can I ask if one of those two groups is ready to share their um, discussion? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, I was in the first group, breakout room. Um, in my group... Can you just introduce in, yourself? Uh, yes, I'm Maliha. I was uh, Maliha. Uh, with Wendy. Thank you, Thank you. sorry. Super. Yeah, Thank in the you. first breakout room. So in my group, uh, there was a vast conversation. Um, uh, the first point uh, what I identified is um, uh, in this, uh, uh, the community-based adaptation, uh, uh, adaptation, the communities are not uh, really perfectly identified. So, so first thing we have to do is to identify the community uh, properly and uh, uh, and and then we have to challenge ourselves uh, for that because um, uh, the solution is lying in the community. So we the uh, the practitioners are doing our bit. We are developing projects and to and implementing them. But the 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 actual solution should come from the community, uh, and that will be more effective. Uh, and um, we just should, um, we just can uh, make them uh, come forward with their solutions and we, we give them a platform to talk about their solutions, what are uh, lying, which are, which are lying in the community. 
uh, and also uh, to link the solutions with other um, and uh, support them with the uh, potential technologies maybe uh, with uh, the uh, the potential technologies uh, with uh, um, other and the second thing we discussed about the the the, commu the communication between three groups like in the like the community the the practitioners and the research community the community uh, people are facing the actual problems and the practitioners so we are developing projects and implementing them and the researchers are doing their bit scientifically but there is a lack of uh, communication between uh, among these three groups um, uh, uh, so we should uh, strongly focus on the communication of these three groups to uh, for a sustainable uh, solution and the uh, next thing we talked about uh, the the the, the, the ownership and uh, uh, so, so firstly the ownership of uh, the create a platform technological platform for the, the community uh, people uh, which are more friendly and more accessible to them uh, so when we are talking about a platform the platform should be should not uh, be familiar to us only should be very familiar to them to the community people the, so that they can access to them very easily and um, also the strong proper strong partnership and communication between the practitioner uh, among the practitioner the community and the donor uh, the, the hierarchy should be uh, the hierarchy should be uh, more friendly and strong partnership is needed and there is all there was also this discussion about the language barrier and uh, language barrier not only language the idea wise the, the barrier of the ideas uh, between the community and the practitioners um, uh, so these were the most um, discussions from my group really great um thank you very much um i noticed that uh, your last point is definitely sort of coming back to uh, a sort of reiteration of what we heard from the first group that reported back um, about access and and you know making sure things are user friendly um, and about that point about platforms and also I like the fact that what you introduced there new was about communication you, you know looking at uh, the issue is about communication and how if we facilitate probably better communication then maybe there'll be more effective uh, uptake thank you very much so we have one group to go uh, are we ready for the last group yeah chris i can start from as far as room um well, introduce yourself is that danny that's that's me danny speaking yeah oh, okay. um, so we, we had in our group some really interesting examples from Nepal, from the ground in Nepal. Um, we talked about connectivity as a barrier to uptake um, and on that, the need to rely not only on one dissemination channel. Uh, we talked about an example in which during a disaster event, a flood disaster event, connectivity cuts out and therefore mobile apps that depend on network uh, are deemed uh, effectively useless. So these, uh, if we go back to the presentation and think about uh, having manual weather boards uh, and community support groups and community um, uh, conversations, then those, those more manual, uh, more human-based uh, means of, of climate information delivery are, are important too. Uh, in terms of ensuring uh, the uptake of climate information and early warning, uh, we talked about uh, having greater community engagement um, with knowledge production. Um, and one of the key ways in which this could be done was drills uh, before the monsoon, uh, before um, preparedness activities to be done before the hazard. Uh, this provides a way to uh, judge the extent of community knowledge uh, and also gives communities an opportunity to feedback uh, what they, the, their take on, on mechanisms as they, as they currently exist. Um, so preparedness activities 
um, before the hazard are, are a strong way of ensuring that, uh, of, of tweaking those, those early warning and climate information systems. So that was our take. Super. Well, what we've, you know, each group has come up with very different or prioritised very different issues. Together, that actually makes quite a, I think it's quite a strong reflection, a lot of useful information. So I think a proper write-up of this, this session certainly will be helpful because I, I see it as quite comprehensive. We've got the, um, the effectiveness sort of aspect from the first group, the business case aspect from the second, the communication between the third, and then now you've brought up uh, the whole issue about connectivity and um, and I suppose uh, making sure that uh, systems work well in communities. I think there's more of a focus there on 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 disaster situations when the, such things are challenged. I mean, it's really good. Um, I haven't got access to the first chat box, Sohail, and just as we were breaking out into breakout groups, uh, I saw a question come in but wasn't able to copy and paste it. I, I did see a question from Aurelie, uh, which popped in the um, chat box just before we went breakout groups about how capacities and needs of people from of different gender are considered in the process. Uh, processes presented by our panelists. I think that was a really good reminder. I hope other people caught that. Um, and and group uh, one one group was a group. Well, the first group you definitely um, yeah raised the whole issue about access by women. Uh, you know, language, location, where things are, and being user friendly, and so on. Let's open it up now. You've heard from the four groups. You've been challenged. You've heard from the two Ignite presenters. I'm opening this up. We've got, um, so I see it, we've got 19 minutes left, maybe wrong. Maybe 15, 16, I can't remember. Yeah, we've, got, we've certainly got a bit of time uh, before we, we sort of close. Are there people from the, um, who've been listening to this, who would like to reflect on on what you feel this session, things from this session which really help with achieving our objectives. By the way, can I have the next slide? Because the next slide will give us some. So basically, what we're trying to do here is identify as a group uh, interesting or notable comments that you want to highlight, that you've heard people say, that you think are really important to, to more effective uh, climate information systems, early warning systems, and more effective anticipatory action for CBA. That's the challenge. Um, so I'm inviting people to uh, either emphasize or challenge or introduce um, points that you feel have not yet been mentioned. Um, we will go to our three Ignite presenters and ask them for their one top point because of this discussion, what you've heard today. Um, but right now I'm opening this up to everybody else who is in the room. Oh, so we've Hi. got who's Please, uh, I can't see. Uh, Hi, Hi, Nabin. Yes. yes. Uh, let me, let me, um, I mean, like uh, add on a uh, few more points on it because uh, some of the good uh, discussions and communications were come out uh, uh, from this group exercise. I mean, like the, the inclusion of women. In addition to that, the inclusion of the marginalized and the differently able people in uh, integration within the community level uh, with uh, the CIS and EWS information can be also a good uh, you know, uh, level to reduce the vulnerability uh, at, the, at, the, at the, the ground level. I mean, uh, uh, what I mean to say is like the integration of uh, differently abled people, marginalized uh, people, 
in 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 the process of early warning system and the CIS that can make a difference. Thank you. Absolutely, and 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 you do wonder sometimes. Um, I mean, I think this this is the age old problem, isn't it? It's reaching the most vulnerable or the people who are not normally participating in in these processes and using this information. So I think that's a really good point. Thank you very much, Nabin. Does anybody want to uh, answer Nabin or respond? Meanwhile, in the chat, I see um, a comment from Kadja that I'm trying to take read. Uh, so not to start from the perceived solution, climate information or early warning systems, but bring it in, bring that in when it can help answer the questions that arrive from from the community, you know, the, the problems they're facing. So that is a, I have a lot of empathy for that point. Uh, often I feel in my career, I've seen things where technology is looking for a home. People have a solution and they're trying to use that solution and promote that solution. Um, because that's what they've developed and they believe in it. So it's like the technology is looking for a home and and uptake rather than is it addressing the problem, the needs. Um, we know the challenges brought about by climate change elsewhere and community early warning could be a vital way of supporting vulnerable communities in Africa as well as uh, flooding. So and Andy would like to hear uh, how access to information and whether forecasting could be taken to scale outside Asia. So yes, I mean, certainly South Asia is a very vibrant um, entrepreneurial uh, context, isn't it? There's a lot of, uh, it's very dynamic and vibrant um, location and sometimes things where there's more remote locations and maybe ent enterprises don't thrive so well it, so I think I can think of contexts in Africa where such entrepreneurial approaches are less likely to be viable less likely to work that's Andrew's question does anybody have a response to Andrew um, uh, yes, Chris, I would like to, uh, I'd like to respond. Yeah, uh, this is thank you for this important question. This is very important. And uh, yes, uh, uh, to scale up uh, this, uh, the innovations that I talked in my presentation, we started uh, uh, piloting this uh, uh, innovation uh, in like uh, uh, 2013 at the uh, community of Shirajgon, that is a flood prone district. And from there on, like uh, the, our first innovation was the manual board and like several like trial and errors and working on that uh, weather boards uh, and uh, trying to see that how it can be effective, what can be actually included as a content in the weather boards and how community can get access to it. Uh, uh, based on all those analysis, uh, several community consultation and consultation with the stakeholders, we uh, we then uh, move on to our next innovation that was the digital weather board. And after that, seeing the benefit of this uh, uh, weather boards, uh, the government, uh, Department of Agricultural Extension fund, uh, uh, with, with the fund of WHO, they are now scaling up uh, the same approach, the manual board, uh, this innovation in uh, more than 4,000 union positions. So uh, I, I think uh, like uh, seeing the benefit and the, uh, uh, and the, like how it is actually uh, actually supporting the communities and the other uh, stakeholders who are actually involved in the disaster management, uh, uh, they actually picked up uh, this innovation. So certainly like uh, 
uh, uh, and uh, community who were saying that they really incurring losses because they don't have the early warning system. And sometimes what happened in at the district level on the areas which are uh, which are flooding every time, not necessarily that remote areas also get the access to these uh, informations, and then they really put themselves into a, like difficult uh, conditions. And so I think, yes, it is, uh, uh, it is important that we reach with these innovations uh, uh, to remote communities even so that they can get the benefit out of it. Thank you. So, so um, oh, Madan has raised his hand. So, Madan, can you please? Uh... Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, actually. I, I just wanted to echo Danny, actually, saying that you know, we must, must pay give recognition to uh, local solutions for uh, strengthening early actions uh, or anticipatory actions. Uh, this is, uh, I was emphasizing on the manual gaze reading stations uh, that helped in Nepal actually, uh, when the automatic gauge station could not uh, disseminate information uh, to, uh, and, uh, because, and also there was uh, the connectivity losses. So that time, this supplemental system that the local solution has really helped the people uh, downstream 6.5 hours, uh, you know, the lead time was there and that was very, very effective. So I just want to echo what Danny was saying that we must not always think of advanced technologies or expertise, but we should also pay respect to the uh, system that is, that is working locally, uh, locally developed systems. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Madan. Um, thank you, Afsari, too. Adele pointed out that um, in order to, um, I suppose, know about effectiveness, we need to have a good baseline, uh, and 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 that baseline needs to include the most marginalised, and then we can we can work out um, well find out blockages. He's making a point there about them having the capacity to uptake the information, and this baseline can should look at that. Um, Aurelie has shared a paper um, in CARE on sustainability of participatory scenario planning. The link is there in the chat. Um, I feel at my stage, um, I think sometimes these conversations get confused when we're con maybe uh, talking about one solution to two very contrasting sort of situations. There is the disaster uh, situation which needs urgent action, but facilities and services can be disrupted and and uh, we need to work with the most um, vulnerable, the most vulnerable are you know at risk. And then there's the sort of longer term planning. And one of the things I think that the practical action uh, case showed is that, there are pros and cons of the different types of ways the technology is used, which uh, depend on whether we're responding to an emergency or whether we're responding to a improving livelihoods over the longer term. And, and I don't, and I think, uh, for example, the market information, the real-time market information, the uh, interactiveness with uh, ex agricultural extension is good with the digital system, in a sort of calm environment, but in a crisis environment, then unfortunately you wonder if that type of um, information is going, system's going to work. And, and you see all the strengths of them, which I think what Asari is saying about the manual weather boards and, and the access that that can do and how that tool can work better in that context. You may have a view. Look, we're reaching the end. We've got uh, seven minutes left. I'd like to invite um, each presenter to give me their top one point because of this discussion. Uh, and maybe I can start with Wendy. I see our cameras just come on. Wendy, what's your top one point? And just give you a minute for that. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. And thanks, everyone. This has been a really, really interesting discussion. I think particularly for myself, because um, I come from more of that climate research and, and technology side of things. It's it's really good to get um, more of a sort of holistic view on, on um, this adaptation. Um, I think my point kind of comes out of 
the discussion group, so the, the first breakout session, and was also built upon in the discussion um, that we've just had. But it's really about um, these partnerships and um, how to sort of strengthen them. And I think from what I can see, it's important to look at these partnerships on more of a sort of equal level. And it shouldn't really be about sort of even just the communication, it should be about trying to be as inclusive as, as possible from the outset to avoid the situation where it is just, we have a solution, we're gonna try and make it fit to different contexts. It should be that the communities on the ground should be involved and actively participating in these decision-making processes from the outset to try and create these, these equal partnerships. And hopefully then we can avoid some of the, the challenges and the, and the barriers to potential uptake and, and potential scale from there. And also, I mean, I think when you have these equal partnerships and lines of communication, you can then adapt your innovation and potentially um, create a better overall solution. Um, Thank you. So hopefully that was a minute. Thanks very much, yeah, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you for being concise. Uh, Ika, can we hear, what would your one top point be, the takeaway from this discussion? Yeah, uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, my point is uh, about women and youth uh, should be uh, contribute in anticipatory action. What I mean is uh, women should be a part of uh, climate information risk uh, building or sustainability. And also youth should to support the, the women as a household woman to get access of the technology and, and make it a uh, sustainability in their uh, daily life. Uh, so why I say about women, because in Indonesia or in my uh, location rule to engage with government and also add uh, some uh, private sector in our work in uh, due to uh, risk reduction. Thank you. Thank you, Ika. Now, um... And I'm pleased that you remind us of the importance of that, by the way. Very pleased. Uh, Afsari, you're, you're one top point because of this discussion. Thank you, uh, Chris, and thank you, everyone, uh, who are participating in this session. My takeaway point for this uh, from this session is that community should be prepared to deal with multiple emer emergencies, not only with only one emergencies. And for this, we need multiple channels to reach people who are at risk with uh, uh, like uh, uh, climate, uh, 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 we need to reach uh, to them with the climate information and early warning system so that if one channel fails for any reason, the others can be activated. That means we should not only depend on one technology or one innovation, there could be multiple options, multiple channels to reach with the communities. And uh, uh, also that uh, when we are talking about the anticipatory action uh, to be effective, all the important stakeholders need to work together because this is not the not not the like a responsibility for only one particular stakeholder or only for the community. We all need to actually work together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to uh, come to Chiara. Um, thank you, by the way. And by the way, I want to tweet that. That was a really good point. I like the nice sort of succinct uh, pitch there uh, for multiple channels. Um, before I come to Chiara, who I'm going to ask if we have achieved what we set out to do and for her reflection, I did mention to Shohail that uh, in the previous um, session, they took a group photo uh, and it was very quick. Everyone put on their camera and there was a, someone took a screenshot, I think, of everybody in gallery view. Do you want to do that very quickly? If everybody, we present the, um, remove the screen share and everybody put on their uh so everybody put on their uh video and we'll take a photo now shahel do you know how to do that by the way i'm assuming you someone uh, can sure i'll be doing it no worries so if you could take a photo of us all and and then i'm going to ask so well, we have to smile, don't we, for a moment and not talk. <laughs> okay. I assume that's done. I'm not sure. 
Chiara, um, have we achieved what we set out to do? What to, um, yeah, leave a handing over to you to reflect on that and and close. Sure, thanks, Chris. Um, I mean, we set up to 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 discuss, learn a few notes, a little bit more about um, how to really engage communities um, and in climate information services, early warning system, how to uh, promote partnership. We have, I think we have a, a lot of uh, uh, good uh, and helpful points for discussions. Uh, definitely something to investigate more. Um, my, my, my main takeaway is that there, there are a lot of uh, great and fantastic examples from across the world. We, we heard a lot of examples from South Asia. Um, there's still uh, a lot I think that can be done to um, promote um, these sort of um, technologies and innovation. But I wanted to go back um, a, a little bit on, um, on the point around community and vulnerable groups involvement and really how it's critical to have them right at the center of, of any initiative really um, to then ensure that the outcome that we set up uh, is achieved. So for me, that's the main takeaway, how to ensure that um, they are part of you know, finding the solutions. They are, uh, we, we, we enable them and we are, we, we, uh, we, we keep them at the center of fighting, finding the solution uh, to achieve, you know, whether it's uh, resilience to climates, shocks and stresses, whether it's um, uh, disaster risk reduction. And I also want to point out that unfortunately, sometimes we can't really um, identify boundaries uh, in between them. So what you said, Chris, is very much true, but unfortunately, sometimes emergencies arise where you don't really expect. So we need to be ready to uh, to to identify the, the best solutions um, and to do that to ensure uptake for impact and sustainability of, of, of whatever system we want, we, we, we have identified. So more than you starting from the technology is keeping the communities and vulnerable groups at, at the center of it. Um, yeah, so that's my main takeaway. Uh, quite a lot to collect uh, from this session. We will be compiling all the uh, contributions, the feedbacks, the questions, thoughts. Um, and uh, unless there is no other, um, no other uh, question or feedback, I really would like to thank everybody. I would like to thank the presenters um, that um, started this uh, session with three very useful and fantastic Ignite presentations. I'd like to, to thank Chris, I'd like to thank Susan, all the um, Shalil and everybody who uh, played the role of rapporteur. Um, that's, that's very critical to, uh, um, to, to compiling the um, takeaways from, from this session. I'd like to thank everybody who was able to join uh, with your expertise, your questions, your inputs, with um, the resources also that have been shared. I need to go back and go through them. So very much thanks to everybody. I hope you enjoyed the session and I hope you still have time to uh, attend additional sessions from CBA today. Um, so unless there's no one else, and no one wants to uh, come in and, uh, and comment, ask any question, I'll, um, I think we, we can close um, the session. Yeah. And, and spot on time. Perfect. I think one minute to go. Round of applause, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank You'll you. find the recording. Thank you so much. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Bye.